of my favorite pastimes is to walk around Utah without wearing a brassiere. It's delicious, the looks you get from older Mormon women. Well, this is awkward. Yes, I'm back in Utah, as you can see. I lived in Denver a whole four days and decided that um, I needed to move out. So this isn't something I really want to talk about, but since I vlogged me moving to Denver because I was in a new relationship, I feel like I now have to explain why I left and why I'm no longer living in Denver and I'm back to traveling. It's a bit of a sore subject and I don't really want to, you know, give it too much time and attention, but I feel like I just need to fill you guys in with what's going on. A lot of you were concerned about me moving in with somebody so quickly, and I can understand why that's super out of character for me. Like typically I would need to know someone really well before I move in with them, ex with the exception of a social experiment, traveling abroad and such. I've only lived with a couple boyfriends and it was after dating for at least a year. So moving to Denver was I don't know if it was a hasty decision, but um, it felt like the right thing to do. I met this person online and we started talking on Christmas and we talked every day since. We FaceTimed, I went to meet him in Denver and spent a few days there. But I decided that I needed to keep traveling and I wanted, I had just relaunched my YouTube channel and wanted to keep traveling around to beautiful places such as this and just keep focusing on my career and you know I didn't want to have a long distance relationship but I did want to keep traveling so I booked a trip to see him for a week and he was going to come see me for a week down in Palm Springs but we talked every day and FaceTimed every night and I felt like I was really getting to know this person and falling for this person and vice versa and I was just kind of struggling in van life and my jackeries had just broken. We have zero watts coming in. Zero. Dude, neither one of those are jackeries are working. That's fucking annoying. I guess we're gonna just have to drive and charge these today. I was planning on moving to Denver and living out of my trailer once it warms up. With all the stuff going on, I was like, screw it. I'll just move up there. I'll move in with him for a couple months and we'll see how it goes. I am driving back up to Denver. What? But why would you do that? Yes, I am doing that. I have been dating someone from Denver, okay? And I miss him and I wanna see him and that's what I'm gonna do. It felt like the right thing to do. Yes, it was gonna put a pause on traveling a little bit, but I have a lot of footage I was going to post. I was figuring it out business-wise and it's really difficult in this lifestyle to not only meet people, but to keep a relationship going. So I thought it was worth it to go move in with him and give it a real shot. At least I would find out quickly if it was gonna be a good match or not so we were both on board he really wanted me to move in and he's like this is our place like make it your home i want you to decorate and do your thing feel at home feel comfortable here and that made me feel really good i was like okay are you sure though because i have a lot of stuff so i moved in all my stuff the first day i moved it in i didn't get everything organized if it ain't so we might as well rock and rock of the apartment um 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 yeah yep yeah huh this is happening so the place was pretty much a mess but i did finish the living room and i finished the bedroom i put my furry stuff everywhere i don't know we'll see what he thinks that's a dana thing that's a dana thing i swapped his couch pillows for my white ones it's very much me i'm taking over taking over my new boyfriend's house so oh check this Oh my god, a summary condo. So he did really like what I did with the apartment. He was super appreciative, loved the closet, loved the living room and the bedroom, but something kind of weird happened. He had this gigantic flat screen TV and he had a huge box. I haven't even organized any of my stuff yet. He just bought this gigantic TV. So I'm gonna take this box downstairs so I can start organizing my crap over here. And then there's like one, two, three, four, five empty boxes. So I moved the boxes down by his front door so we could take them out. I wasn't sure where to put them or where to throw them away. And I just kind of waiting for him to get home from work. And I'm not here to like throw anyone under the bus or anything, but there were a couple red flags and a big red flag when he got home he got upset about the cardboard boxes and he started punching the cardboard boxes in the hallway and it actually really scared me freaked me out i was like this is not this is not okay behavior i understand people get upset i understand that 
maybe that was a frustrating thing but punching the boxes and getting so upset over the boxes being there i mean there's probably other stuff going on too i'm not here to just like call anyone out or throw them under the bus but it was um it was alarming for sure it was definitely alarming i waited till the next day to bring it up to him and it just didn't sit right with me it didn't feel right and typically in this situation i would give someone a second chance and a third chance and you know work with someone on this but I'm 39. I need someone who's already worked through their issues. I mean, we all have issues. I'm constantly working on mine. I probably could have stuck it out and worked with him on that because he's a really great guy and we had a lot of great things going, at least it seemed like from what I knew of him, but I just did not feel safe there. I didn't know what kind of mood he was gonna be in when he came home and if boxes in the hallway make him that upset, like what happens when we have real issues? You know what I mean? So I'm not saying it's his fault. I'm just saying I needed to feel safe in my living environment, I have to feel safe. It's very triggering for me too because I grew up with abuse in the home and that's absolutely a deal breaker for me. We all get angry and we need to honor that and sometimes you need to go punch your pillow and stuff like that. But um, to get that angry about boxes being in the hallway, especially after he said like, do your thing, make yourself at home. I felt like he was pissed at me and taking it out on the boxes. I don't know, it was just that plus um, some other red flags including like really building me up and talking me up and saying i'm perfect which nobody's perfect and then once i get comfortable and he knows i like him then he starts like tearing me down a little bit again not here to call anyone out or um say he's a bad guy or a bad person it's just there were too many red flags after just being there for two days no that i hadn't even been there 24 hours when that happened it was very tempting for me to just stay and stick it out because it was comfortable i had just set up my studio i had everything set up i'm like yay it was like an ideal situation to be warm every day and have running water and be in love you know so i was tempted to stay but i'm so happy i left i like packed everything up in a hurry and i just i left i left and it sucks i really thought this relationship had potential but i knew by moving in with him we'd find out fast if it was going to work or not and we did we found out very fast so i feel like an idiot because i spent so much money and so much time driving to denver trying to make this relationship work and then huge red flag for me huge red flag everyone has them everyone has red flags everyone has shit they're working on and dealing with but violence is something that's very triggering for me and it's something i'm not willing to work with so yeah, I'm proud of myself for leaving um, and not letting him talk me into staying. I'm proud of myself for not waiting until it gets worse for me to pack up and leave. Um, it sucked to pack up and leave. Like I cried all day. It was awful. I had just gotten everything organized and now I'm throwing things in bags and packing up again. I've been here like three or four days and I just have to trust, trust my instincts. I can't believe this literally just got everything unpacked and settled and put away last night and packing it all up not feeling sorry for myself i just know it's the right thing to do it's just kind of exhausting because it's just very exhausting everything about this is exhausting but i know it's the right thing Typically, if I see a huge red flag, I would give a second chance and work it out. But I'm not doing that this time. I'm not going to wait for it to get worse to leave. I'm going to leave today. It was very, very awful. Extremely awful. But I'm proud of myself for getting out of that situation. It did not feel right. I did not feel safe. I need to feel safe in my living environment. I'm not saying he's a bad person. I'm just saying I know what I need. I need to feel safe. And I also know about myself that I'm too patient of a person and I put up with too much bullshit and I'm easily convinced to stay. I'm easily um, manipulated. And so I'm just making sure I put myself first and do what I need to do for my happiness. Maybe that means I'm not great in a relationship right now and that's okay. Yeah, I just need to find my own happiness. I kind of need to get my own shit together too. Like I realized I'm in a very vulnerable spot. Like I never would have moved in with someone that fast. I would have dated them. So I just, I need to get myself settled for a while. Hi. And um, 
I just needed to feel settled in my own life before I date anybody. Ultimately, I'm grateful I did move in with him because I would have continued to date him long distance and then we would have found out later on that it wasn't going to be a compatible situation. I also appreciate you guys. There's a lot of people, you know, questioning whether that was the right move and I know. Hi! And I know we moved in together for the wrong reasons. We moved in together for necessity because I can't live in Denver in the cold in this thing. I just can't. So yeah, those are the kind of the wrong reasons. We moved in for the right reasons, as in we really like each other. We had a lot in common. We had a lot of really deep and great conversations. When there were any issues that came up, we were able to repair them and that's really important. But any sort of violence of any kind is, that's a no for me. It just is. I'm proud of myself for leaving before it got worse. I don't know if it would have got worse, but I don't want to come home and feel uncomfortable in my living environment. I don't want that. I just want to feel consistently loved and cared about with someone and comfortable with them. And um, we all have moods for sure. We all get into bad moods and stuff, but it just did not feel right. There were a lot of red flags way too early on. So I'm back back on the road and back traveling full time. So that's um that's the update with all of that. Kind of crazy. I'm a little embarrassed, but mainly just proud of myself for staying true to me and um, putting myself first. Typically, I wouldn't leave in that situation. I would kind of ignore my own gut feelings to kind of help the other person out, help him through. Um, those issues. I have my own issues too. Also another red flag is he said I complete him and he's he does he feels like a piece of him is missing when I'm gone which those are romantic notions but that's not how I feel. I feel like I'm a whole person and I'm in charge of my happiness and I can't be the half of someone else. I'm already like too busy taking care of my own happiness. I need someone to feel whole and complete within themselves and then we come together as two whole people. I don't want to complete anyone else. That's too much pressure on me you know I can't complete myself and someone else so it's very romantic in a lot of ways but also I'm not looking for like this big romantic relationship I want a lasting one I want a healthy one I want two whole people to come together and increase the value of each other's lives and I have to honor him because he did a lot of really um, he did a lot for me he uh, was very sweet very kind it did kind of switch once I got comfortable with him so I don't know. I'm learning to honor myself first always and I don't know how that works in a relationship. I think you have to be a little flexible but it has to be like a healthy situation as well. I'm not gonna put myself into a toxic situation. So I left and here I am. Here I am in beautiful beautiful St. George, Utah. I think I didn't realize how much stress the relationship was putting on me. I felt like it came from a good place, but I felt like he put a lot of pressure on me to come see him and to have a relationship and to move to Denver. And of course, if I want a relationship with him, we're gonna have to be in the same general area. I don't want a long distance relationship. So it's just very hard to date on the road. My ideal situation would be to date someone who's also traveling and we could travel together and help each other out. Like that would be ideal. Or to meet someone in a warm climate. Like Lake St. George, the land of swingers and Mormons. So basically I'm just gonna be single. I wish I didn't love St. George, Utah so much. I really wanna settle here. It's just, I can't with the swingers and the Mormons. I just can't with y'all. I'm finally back to normal. The last two days I've just kind of slept all day. I've been so exhausted. I moved all my stuff into the apartment, organized it for two days and then moved it out the next day. It was intense emotionally. It was intense physically, but I really feel relieved now that I'm back on the road. I feel like I have a much more positive attitude. It was just hard to be away from him. I felt very like pulled in two directions and I wanted to see if it was going to work with him but I also wanted to travel and start my channel again. It just felt very torn and just pulled in a million directions. So I feel like emotionally it was it was tough and I kind of had like a piss poor attitude but now I feel like oh, I feel like I can do van life. I can do this. I'm going to get my solar panels fixed. It's all groovy. I'm feeling really, really happy. It just feels good to have a direction. Like I know that's done. It's hard because the thing is I would absolutely move somewhere if I found the love of my life. I absolutely would. And I have no problem being domesticated. I have no problem settling down. That's what I want eventually. But in the meantime, I really do love this lifestyle. I love traveling around. I need to fix a few things and make it a little more functional. The two things I need to get, I'm going to get my solar 
solar panels fixed, but I also want to get another Jackery 1500. So I'm saving up money to be able to get that because I want to have a Jackery in here, but also in the Suburban to run the fridge off of. I'm also going to get a hotspot with Verizon. I have AT&T on my phone, but if I get a hotspot with Verizon, I'll be able to do uploads from places like this as long as I have service. And it'll just make this lifestyle a lot easier. I'll be able to have my refrigerator and my food with me. I can always just go dig a hole and you know do that business so i'm excited to just have a little more positive outlook on this lifestyle right now and i'm in sunny st george i'm always happy when i'm in sunny st george so <laughs> people are cute um always always so much happier in the sunshine denver's a really cool city though i'll be back in the summertime on my way up to montana and canada and do that whole thing but I feel like he's a really beautiful man. There's just some issues that I'm not willing to wait around for him to work it out, which I feel bad saying that, but it's also not my job to tell someone like, hey, you need to figure this out or I'm gone. Like I don't want an ultimatum type thing. I just, I know what I need. I know what I want. I'm almost 40 years old. Like yes, 30 year old Dana would stick it out. Cause I think we had a lot of good in that relationship, but um, yeah. I choose me and it feels good. It feels really good. It was the hardest thing to leave that situation. Very, very hard. You know, it was comfortable. We had kind of made up and he told me he would never do it again. Again, I'm not trying to air dirty laundry. I just want to explain um, the situation a little bit and why I left and why I'm proud of that decision. It's heartbreaking. It's heartbreaking for me. It was heartbreaking for him. Like we were talking about marriage and kids and all the things, but the reality of it when we were actually together was a little different than when we were um, on FaceTime and texting and all that. So thank you guys for being supportive. I'm back on the road. I'm really proud of myself for leaving. This is the first time I've ever just left when there were some significant red flags. I always give people chance after chance. Like I'm not perfect either. I got, you know, I was getting flustered when I was moving stuff in because my feet were frozen. Um, you know, we all have our moments, but I'm done ignoring significant red flags. I mean, right now I could be in his apartment feeling really bad about myself and not feeling safe in my environment. And instead I'm here in Utah. I feel safe. I feel proud of myself for honoring my gut reaction. I'm not only exhausted from the emotional part of it and moving everything out, but I just wanted to get back to St. George. So I drove all the way through the night. I don't even know where to go. I have to teach in an hour. So I have to kind of get my shit together. I feel very lost right now though. I was really thinking this guy was the one. Not that there's a one, but like, I feel like we could build a really good life together. I decided to come to St. George because it's a place I'm comfortable. I have friends here, I'm established here. You know, I know where to park. I know where the good internet is. I just feel comfortable here. So I decided to just start driving. I finished lessons in the evening. So I was driving at night. It's a 10 hour drive to St. George. So I just figured I would drive until I felt tired and I'd pull over and find a place to sleep. So I pulled into this Love's gas station and I was planning on going to bed however <laughs> i just opened my door and all this shit fell out damn it yeah i packed in a hurry and just threw everything i had in the trailer i didn't organize anything i just threw it in in boxes i don't really want to be doing this right now no i sure don't oh, why? can't even get in to my trailer right now i just want to go sleep in that bed what I want to do. Do I just keep driving? Should I go all the freaking way to St. George tonight? I mean, I'm going to have to do this in St. George at 5 a.m. as well, but do I sleep in the car? What do I do? I was going to park. I think I'm just going to drive all the way to St. George. It's going to be like another five or six hours and I'm pretty pooped, but I just want to like, I just want to wake up tomorrow morning somewhere that I'm comfortable and somewhere that feels somewhat like home. Yeah. 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 Well, either way, I just filled up with gas and got a coffee. I'm going to get in at like 6 a.m. Or maybe I just drive across the street and park at the pilot. I mean, I've been doing, I don't really feel comfortable parking here now that I've exposed my pens to the whole world. I got a decaf just in case I wanted to sleep anytime soon. It's way too many decisions. I'm excited to go park it. Let's just drive. 
I can find a place to park somewhere along the way if I absolutely want to. Mm. Let's drive. I want to get there. I decided to drive through the night. I did get sleepy again around 3 a.m. So I pulled into this rest stop, but I missed the truck and trailer entrance and I didn't feel like doing a U-turn. So I just kept driving and I drove until the sun came up. I took a little nap in a Wendy's parking lot. I pulled into a gas station to pull off and sleep and all the spaces were filled up with semis and cars and stuff. So I just pulled into a Wendy's parking lot and just parked there and I slept in my front seat with the heater on. It was so cold. I got like one hour of sleep and then I hit the road and finally made it to St. George at like eight or nine in the morning. I'm trying to get to my bed to sleep. I made it to St. George. <laughs> my ceiling's falling down. This came tumbling down. I had a feeling that would happen. Oh lordy lord. I am lord. Yeah yeah yeah. Um we're looking okay. We're looking just okay. Okay is where we're at. I think I'm gonna go to Ace Hardware and get some more sticky Velcro stuff. And yeah, hopefully it'll heat up a little bit in here. It's a disaster. My piano broke. It's a beautiful day today. I am not going to be sleeping until this is cleaned up though. It's appearing. I'm gonna go get coffee. <laughs> favorite pastimes is to walk around Utah without wearing a brassiere. It's delicious, the looks you get from older Mormon women. It's the disapproving, I'm going to heaven and you're not look. I love St. George. It's 523 and the sun hasn't even set yet. So I ended up cleaning all day and I took a couple walks, drank some coffee, tried to just be a little easy on myself today. Got a little editing in and I got most everything organized. Still have to do my kitchen stuff, but it's been a long couple days. Put a dick in me, I am done. No, but really I'm like, I've never been so exhausted in my entire life. If you guys know the journey. Wow, this journey has just been wow. It's been wow. It feels so good to be in St. George because it feels a little bit like home. I'm comfortable here. I have friends here. I know all the hikes. I know which coffee shop has the best upload speed, that kind of thing. I've just been parked here all day and I've been able to walk around, like go on the bike paths, go get coffee in the morning and food go to the grocery store so it's been really really ah, just a good mental day for me it's gonna take a little to recover from the last couple weeks but it's for the best I've made a dumb decision or two in my life but I'm actually happy that I moved to Denver and found out, you know, if it was going to work or not. I found out very fast because I'd still be traveling around and staying in contact with this person and then, you know, just like drag on and the inevitable would eventually happen. And I think it happened how it was meant to be. It's not how I was hoping it would go, but so is life. But driving to Denver and then going down to Palm Springs, back up to Denver, unloading all my stuff, packing it, organizing it. That took like three days <laughs> just to unpack it and put it back in the trailer on the fourth day and then drive for 10 hours after lessons, like driving through the night. I got one hour of sleep last night and I wanted to get things organized. So I did that today and wow. Wow, 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 wow. I wouldn't have known unless I tried though. If I lived in Denver in the summer, I could have dated him and like gradually got to know him. But since it was so cold, it just made more sense to move in and just give it a go. But it was a no-go. I'm still kind of shooketh. I'm definitely in shock. I'm very heartbroken and sad, but also happy that it happened this early on so I can move on. There's no way in any real world situation I would move in with someone that early. Of course, I would date them longer. If I do date anybody, I need to stay where it's warm so I can live in here and just date them like normal. I also wanna get, you know, 
an apartment somewhere and have a home base. Um, that might be St. George, I don't know, but I'm gonna travel for a while and still kind of feel it out, but saving up for an apartment, saving up for a better rig. I wanna still be able to travel a lot, like go away for weeks at a time, but I definitely need a home base, even if it's just a little place by myself. Like I don't wanna like move into someone's place. I want my own place. I want a healthy relationship. That's what I want. This year has been a lot. Like I'm a pretty strong and resilient person and I'm a pretty positive person too, but this year it's been rock bottom multiple times over it just it's what it is it is what it is i'm very exhausted very exhausted right now all i could do is move on all i could do is make my space beautiful and cozy and homey and it feels really good in here right now oh my god i didn't really realize how much of a toll that relationship was taking on me like traveling back and forth and trying to stay trying to date long distance i'm not great at long distance dating and we we're having trouble with like cell service and staying in touch and it's this is the right path i definitely feel that here we are back in the trailer <laughs> back to adventures and i'm about four songs behind i've written them every day but i haven't recorded them because i've been driving i only got three or four videos up this week so i'm i'm pretty behind because i've been driving a lot two days straight to denver was there for four days and then drove all the way through the night very peaceful with my candles and this half of my van looks great this half not so much not so much again i took everything out it's not like i kept it in its boxes like i organized everything together in the new apartment and then moved out hello beautiful utah morning got my jackery charging there's one of three jackeries working but we'll take it got that direct sunlight Whew gonna clean up and start writing some music it's been a rough month but um moving forward i'm feeling good about van life again i'm feeling good about this journey don't tell journey we were talking about her but here we are fresh start and um i hope you guys will join me in the next set of adventures also i was wondering if you guys like the that's so indie episodes maybe i'll add those in every once in a while into the mix do more of a story time video for the most part i'm just gonna be doing daily vlogs I'm also taking my old footage and making tiktok videos out of them so i'm very very busy i like to keep busy anyways thank you so much for watching to the end of the video it helps out my channel so much and if you made it this far write sunny saint george down in the comments and i will write you back. That's it for today's video. If you liked it, give it a thumbs up. If you loved it, share it with your friends. See you tomorrow.